sit on the throne of mercy, your glory shining bright for all to see. Oh God, I will praise you. Simply praise unending. You rescue us with love that never fails. Oh God, I will praise you. Who is like the Lord, strong in battle? Who is like the This goes before and goes behind. Oh God, I will praise you. Who is like the Lord, strong in battle? Who is like the Lord, mighty to save? Who is like the Lord, King forever? Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. Jesus. 
Be magnified. 
strong to worship you And if it puts me in the fire I'll rejoice cause you're there too I won't be fooled by feelings I hold fast to what is true And if the cross brings transformation And I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just a doorway To resurrection life And if I join you in your sufferings And I'll join you when you rise And when you return Angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing. Welcome this weekend to Church of the Redeemer. So glad that you're joining us online for our services this weekend. We're praying for you. You know, it's a difficult season for everyone, praying for the world around us. And uh, we're, we're hoping and praying that you will experience the peace of God as we're involved in this series together called Peace In and Peace Out. The reason we've titled this series Peace In, Peace Out is because you and I need to experience the peace of God inside of us so it can work out of us to the world around us. Our world desperately needs peace during this time, and it comes from people who've experienced peace in their lives. Now, the focal point of our series together is the 23rd Psalm. You know it well. The Lord is my shepherd, a Psalm of David. I'm going to talk today about how that Psalm really makes an impact upon our lives when it comes to putting the pieces of our life back together again. We're going to talk about the power of restoration in our lives. Now, let me give you a little bit of background on the Psalm so you understand where, what motivated David to write it. Uh, as, as we know from Scripture, many theologians believe that David wrote this passage of Scripture during a very challenging period in his own life, the time when his son Absalom was about to take the kingdom away from David. Absalom had since conspired with some people around David to actually take the kingdom from him and more than likely murder him. And so can you imagine what it must have been like when King David heard the news that his very own son was about to destroy him and become king himself? So the Bible says that David left Jerusalem and went through the Kidron Valley and he made his way out into the wilderness. He's there to, for protection. He knows that he has to hide from his son. And so he's hiding, he's finding a place of refuge in the wilderness. And I can imagine that when David is looking around the wilderness, he, he's also put back to a place in his past when he was a shepherd boy in Judea. And he remembered the familiar landscape and he saw sheep in different places as he's hiding there from his son Absalom. And he goes back to the fact that one day he had been a shepherd and he learned something about taking care of sheep and it puts him back in the perspective that now he's the sheep and God is his shepherd. So he writes these words in this very difficult period, the Lord is my shepherd. He's reminded of the reality of who God is. And he says, as, as, as my shepherd, I, I have everything that I need. God's going to take care of me. And he's reminded of the fact that God is able to lead him into the green pastures and lead him beside the quiet waters, give rest to his soul. And he's reflecting on the reality of who God is. And then he makes this statement. Let me read, in fact, for you the first three verses of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Notice the statement, He restores my soul. David realized that he needed restoration. In the midst of his rest, he needed restoration. See, rest is essential because rest is what brings you the possibility of restoration in your life. And David needed to be restored. He was brokenhearted. His life had been shattered. All of his dreams for the future, what it could look like for his life as he moved into the latter years of his life, everything was, was in the balance right now. And he felt broken about his future, broken about his family, broken about all the circumstances that he felt with his life in that moment. 
And this is why it's so important for us to get the context of David's words. When he said, the Lord is my shepherd, he restores my soul, it was very real to him. And I'm sure that for some of you, it's very real for you right now that you're going through, maybe, you, maybe you've lost your job or maybe you're not sure about your finances or maybe you're going through a situation right now where you feel very broken on the inside. I have a word, I believe, from God for you today. I'm going to share with you three things that we learn about this particular verse, the third verse uh, that we read a moment ago, the first portion of that third verse, the Lord is my shepherd, he restores my soul. I'm going to share with you three things that you and I need to be reminded of in this moment in our lives. The first thing, and this applies to every one of us. We all, we all need to be restored. There's not a single person in the world that is not broken in some way. I'm not sure what the brokenness of your life is. It might be related to the current circumstance that we're going through with this coronavirus and things that are happening right now in our world. It may be something that goes back years or decades in your life where you've had something that was very devastating to you and you found yourself in a place or you in fact find yourself in a place where it still feels like on the inside your life has been shattered. David felt that way in this, in this moment. He felt despair and he felt discouragement. His inner strength was depleted in this moment. And so he felt very broken on the inside. What did David need? David needed a shepherd who could restore his soul. See, David knew that many times in his own life he had, he had found his sheep in places of brokenness and he had, as a shepherd, had gone to them and he had restored them back to health and restored them back to strength again. And he's reminded of what he did as a shepherd and what God would do for him. You know, sheep get themselves in trouble all the time. Sheep find themselves in situations where they need a shepherd to rescue them and restore them. In fact, as you study something about sheep, you'll find that sometimes the sheep will wander away from the fold and they get lost and the shepherd has to go looking for them. Sometimes sheep get hurt and damaged by things or diseased by parasites that affect them and afflict them in some way and the shepherd knows how to care for them. One of my favorite books to read is The, is the, the Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. It's by Philip Keller. He talks about a shepherd's perspective of taking care of sheep. And so sheep get themselves in trouble. They get broken. They get stuck in situations where they cannot get themselves out of. They get disoriented and they don't know what to do with their, with their circumstance. And so a shepherd comes on the scene and a shepherd does for the sheep what the sheep cannot do for themselves. And I just want to remind you today that wherever you are in your life, you're never going to be restored until you realize your need to be restored. And some of us will go through life, we're blind to the fact that we're operating out of brokenness, we're operating out of pain, we're operating out of things that are afflicting us on the inside. And we haven't even acknowledged the reality that we need, that we're broken and we need a shepherd. But once we acknowledge that, and that's something we all need to do, that we're broken people, once we acknowledge it, we're well on the way to having the opportunity for the Lord to come and do something in our lives. Can I ask you today, where are you broken? What's breaking you up on the inside? What, what things have happened where you've gotten off the journey? You've been lost in the process of living. You maybe are disoriented with your life right now. Maybe you find yourself, you feel very spiritually or emotionally diseased or dysfunctional. Where's your life broken right now? All of us are in need of restoration because everybody's broken. There's not a single person on the planet who is now in perfect health and perfect function. We need, uh, we need the restoration of our Savior. The second thing, very simple statement I'm giving you today, very simple truth that I'm providing for you this weekend as we reflect together. The second thing is, the Lord is a restorer. Remember that. That's what David remembered. David said, David said, I'm all broken on the inside. I don't know how to fix my life. I, but I do know this. One thing I am sure of, the Lord is my shepherd. And as a shepherd, just like I many times restored my sheep, the Lord is willing to restore me. Let me read now again this passage. Listen again. The Lord is, not might be, could be, possibly be. The Lord is. That's a statement of fact. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. So David is reminded, this is reality. I know who he is, and because I know who he is, I've been a shepherd. He's the good shepherd. I will never be in want. He makes me lie down. He leads me beside still waters, and I can have the confident assurance that he is the one who, in fact, will restore my soul. Now, this word restore in the Hebrew language, I want to talk to you about that word for a moment because it's one of the most exciting words you'll ever find in the Bible. In fact, it is filled up with all kind of meaning. In fact, I found about 10 or 11 different aspects of what the word restore means. Let me give you just a few of them and help you to see how this word is used in the Bible. It means to reconcile a relationship. And so to restore means that you, you get the relationship working again. And so perhaps David needed to restore his relationship with God. Maybe you need to restore your relationship with God. There's a reconciliation that's needed. It means to return to, to, return to a position or a property that's been stolen or lost. What 
whatever's been stolen. See, David was facing that moment when it felt like his kingdom was stolen from him and he knew that God was the one that could restore that kingdom back to him. It means to bring to health, to heal, to heal sicknesses and to heal diseases. You know, many times we think about the various places that were diseased in life and restoration means to bring healing back to those places where you've been sick or dysfunctional. It means to bring back from exile. You've been taken away from something and God brings you back to it. It means to bring back somebody's joy. That's the way the word is used in the Bible or to bring back strength or to bring back to life again. These are all meanings of the word restoration. It means to bring back the lost to their place of security and their proper place and to heal us from the consequences of our sin, to help us with the damaged places of life and to recover from suffering and pain. All of these are definitions, official definitions of the word restore. And the Lord is the one who can restore your soul. How does he do this? How does God restore our soul? Let me share with you some things that are vital. He restores our soul by a relationship with Jesus, his son. John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 12 says, So whoever has the son has life. That is, you have a restored life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. And so it starts with a relationship with Jesus. He restores us through His words. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, He sent forth His word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Acts 20, verse 32 says, Now I'm turning you over to God, our marvelous God, whose gracious word can make you into what He wants you to be and give you everything you could possibly need in this community of holy friends. He restores us by His word. He restores us by His Spirit. God's Spirit is a restoring spirit in your life, restorative spirit. Jesus said as He began His earthly ministry in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, the Spirit, notice that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the downtrodden or the broken will be freed and from their oppressors, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. So here Jesus says, I've come to bring restoration to your life. I'll tell you another way that God restores you. He restores you through relationships with people, His people. You know, sometimes in life we, we need, yes, a relationship with God. We, we also need relationship with God uh, with skin on, people around us. That God comes along and brings our, our restorative process through people that love us and care for us and know how to be gracious to us and to heal us in our process of brokenness. Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. Notice that P- spiritual people don't live their lives in condemnation of others. Spiritual people help restore other people. But watch yourself or you also may be tempted. So all of us are vulnerable to this in life. So by the quiet Uh, by the quiet streams, the still waters, by the beautiful valley of God's Word. He's able to bring us into that place of restoration. Here's my third point today. My third thing to remember is this. To be restored, you have to participate in the process. Notice that statement. Yes, indeed, all of us are broken. Yes, indeed, the Lord is our restorer. But there's a part that we bring to the process. The part that we bring to the process is this. We have to participate in the healing restorative process. It doesn't happen just miraculously with with God only. It, It involves our engagement and our involvement as well. He restores my soul. What does this mean? Well, for David to be restored, he realized he had to lie down in the green pastures. He had to drink from the quiet waters. He had to be in God's Word. He had to trust in God's Spirit. But he also had to do his part in this journey. He knew that it was only going to happen. Restorative restorative relationship with God was only going to happen if he did his part. And the same is true for you and me. Let's talk about some things we've got to do. Number one, if you're going to be restored, you've got to want to be restored. A lot of people never get healing because they don't want to be healed. I'm reminded of the lady in the Bible who uh, actually had a hemorrhaging in her body and she had it for 12 years. And she, the Bible says she spent everything she had on physicians trying to find a cure. And obviously her cure only came when she touched the edge of Jesus' garment. But the phrase that strikes me is that she spent everything she had trying to get better. There was something in this lady that says, I don't want to live a life that's broken. I'm going to do everything I possibly can. I'll spend every dime I have to try to get well. See, God sees that in our lives. When we want to get well, there's something that's really valuable to us, valuable in the eyes of God. So you've got to want to be whole before you can be whole. 
Many people don't want to be whole. They're, they're comfortable in their brokenness. They're comfortable in their, in their disease, if you will. And they don't want to come out of it and move forward. Do you want to be whole? Jesus asked the man that questioned the pool of Bethesda, would you like to be healed? And of course, he had to respond yes before he was able to experience it. The second thing that's necessary in the process, if we're going to be whole and find our rest restoration in God, is you and I have to believe that God wants to restore us. We have to have a confidence that, yes, God cares about me. I'm reminded of the man with leprosy in the Bible. You can read this story in Matthew chapter 8. And he comes to Jesus and he asks the question to Jesus, If you want to, God, I know, Jesus, I know if you want to, you can make me whole. And Jesus responded, Yes, I want to. I desire to do this. And it was a reminder uh, to that man in his condition that, yes, Jesus really did want to do this for him. Sometimes we may want to get well. We may want to find restoration from our brokenness. But we're not quite sure if God wants to do that for us. And I want to reassure you today that yes, God does. He wants to put the pieces back together in your life. Here's the third thing that's necessary. If you and I want to be whole, if we want to be restored, we have to stay planted in a place where God can work on us. You can't be just rolling around with life and jumping here and there in your spiritual commitments if you want to get well. David said, I, I, I learned to lie down in green pastures. You can't, you can't, you can't operate on someone if they're, if they're running around the operating room. You've got, they have to lay down on the, on the gurney. They have to be there on, the, on that surgical table for the surgeon to do the work. You can't get well if you're always on the move. You have to stop for a moment and say, now I'm going to be planted where I can be, be, be ministered to and be strengthened and be blessed and helped in my life. And so sometimes you just have to plant where you are and just rest and believe that God's going to work with you right where you are. He knows where you are. Stay where you are and you'll find that God know, knows how to reach you right where you are. And then you have to be, be prepared to, to let go of your pain. You know, sometimes in life we, we hold on to stuff that we don't need to hold on to anymore, any, any longer. We hold on to pain in our life. There's a great story that you'll find in the Bible that talks about the man at the Pool of Bethesda. I referenced it a moment ago and, and Jesus comes on the scene and there's all kind of sick people around and Jesus comes right to that particular man and says, do you want to be well? Do you want to be whole? And, and the man says, well, I don't have anybody to help me. I've tried to get in the pool many times. I've never been able to make it there and everybody gets in front of me. And he had a lot of excuses. But at the end of the story, Jesus said this to him. He says, rise, take up your bed and walk. See, the walking only happened after he rose up and took up his bed and began to take the journey. He, was, he had to leave his past behind. He had to leave his pain behind. He had to be willing to step into a new season of life. See, when you and I are restored, there's a lot of new responsibilities that come our way. And so this man had to deal with this idea of accepting responsibility, leaving his past, leaving his pain behind. If you're going to be restored, you have to be willing to do the same. I'll give you another thing that's necessary. If you want to be restored, you have to learn to hang out with healthy people. If you're always hanging out with people who are sick, what's going to happen to you? You'll have a sick mentality. If you're, helping, if you're hanging out with people who are broken all the time and they don't want to get well and you're around that kind of environment, I will tell you, I promise you, you will never be able to break forward into your future. And God wants to help you understand that you need to get around some people that are going forward with their faith and trusting God to do things in their life. Their faith is active and believing that God wants to work and they will feed your faith and you will feed their faith. And so healthy people doesn't mean that you're around people that always have it together, but it means you're around people who are on the process of moving toward getting it together in their relationship with God. I'll give you a couple more. You have to follow God's instructions. Whatever God tells you to do in the midst of your journey toward restoration, just do what He tells you to do. In 2 Kings chapter 5, there's a story of a man by the name of Naaman. Naaman had leprosy as well. And he learned that if he would go down to Israel, there was a prophet by the, by the name of Elisha there who could help him find healing. And he goes down to Elisha's house. He knocks on the door and Elisha sends the servant there. And here's the message. Go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River and you'll be restored. You're, you will be healed. Your restoration from God will come to you. And Naaman got all upset because he didn't want to go dip himself in the Jordan River. He thought, oh my goodness, the Jordan River is not a great river. Why don't I go back to Syria and get dipped in some nice river there? But he struggled with just doing what God told him to do. And finally, some of his folks around him encouraged him to do exactly what the prophet said to do. And he goes to the Jordan River and he dips himself seven times. The last time he comes up and the Bible says that all the leprosy was gone. Why? Because he followed God's instructions. That the instructions of God are in His Word. Just do what He says. It will lead you toward restoration. And the last thing I'll mention to you here today, if you want to be restored, you've got to be patient in the process. How long did it take for you to get broken? 
Oh, you've been broken over the years, haven't you? You and I as well. We've had moments that go back 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years where brokenness happened in our lives. And we come to God and expect God overnight to fix everything. Well, yes, God can fix things and He does a fast work in our lives, but it's going to take a process. You have to slow down and say, God, I'm with you. I know it's going to take some time, but I'm going to stay with this process until the healing comes to my life. David learned this in his own life. He learned that he was broken and he needed to be restored. You and I are broken. All of us are. We need restoration. David was reminded there in the wilderness that the Lord is my shepherd. And he knew who the restorer was. And then David engaged in the process that was necessary to experience this healing in his own life. I encourage you to do the same. Would you join me as we pray together today? Father God, I thank you so much for your love for us, that you are the great restorer as our shepherd. And Lord, all of us are broken. We have all kind of broken places in our life that needs to be healed. And I pray, God, that we would come to that awareness, if we're not aware today, that you'd remind us of our need for you and our need for healing in our souls and our lives. And God, I thank you so much that you are the one who is the restorer, that, that you're the primary restorative force that can bring our lives back together and put the pieces back together again. So, Lord, I pray that today that we would engage with you in the process that's necessary for the restoration you planned for us. Let us do our part, Lord, knowing and being absolutely sure that you will do your part. We ask this in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you right where you are right now with your heads bowed and eyes closed to continue with me just for a moment as I talk to some folks today that have never given their life to Christ. If you've never opened your life to Jesus, I want you to listen closely to me for the next couple of moments. All of us, as I said, we're broken, we're sinners. We've sinned against God. And because of that, we need to be forgiven. We need to have a relationship with God because we, did, we, we actually deserve to be punished for our sins. But the Bible says that Jesus came and gave His life on the cross of Calvary to pay the price for your sin and my sin. He gave His life so that we could be forgiven. He shed His blood so that we could be forgiven. And then He waits for us to respond to Him. In fact, in Revelation 3 verse 20, the Bible says that Jesus says, In fact, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hears my voice, I will open the door and have a relationship with him and he with me. And maybe you have never opened the door of your heart, your life, with faith to invite Jesus in. If you'll invite him in, I promise you he will come into your life. He will never force his way in, but he waits for your invitation. When you invite him in, he comes in and changes everything. He makes you a new person. So if you've never invited Christ, I'm going, to, I'm going to encourage you right now to pray this very simple prayer with me. You can whisper it. You can speak it out loud. Wherever you are right now, pray this prayer and invite Jesus into your heart today. Start by praying these words. Just speak out the name Jesus. He's waiting to hear from you. Go ahead and say his name, Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. And God, I'm so sorry for everything I've done wrong. I'm sorry for all of my sins. Now declare your faith in who Jesus is. I, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you're the Son of God and the Savior of the world. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and I believe that you rose from the grave, that you're alive. I pray something like this. Say, right now, Jesus, come into my life. Ask him in right now. Forgive me for all of my sins. I turn my life over to you today. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for each person that just prayed that prayer. I thank you for hearing them. And Father, I thank you that heaven is rejoicing and we rejoice as well for those who've turned their hearts over to you today. We ask you to bless them, help them to grow in you and serve you faithfully from this day forward into eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to join with me in celebrating all those who just gave their lives to Jesus. What a great thing that just happened. And if you prayed to receive Christ in your life, here's what you need to do right now. I want you to text on your, on your, your cell phone, text NEW to 313131. Or you can actually click the button there on your website that you see or on your, your app that you're watching from uh, that says, I accepted Christ, I prayed with the pastor, whatever the wording is there for you. Click that little button. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure you get a resource for your life that will keep you moving forward and get you started on your journey. And that resource is a little book called A New You. A New You. It will help you to know what steps to take next. I promise you, we're not going to bug you, bother you in any way. We simply want to help you get a resource that will get you going on a very good start in your relationship with Jesus Christ. So again, text NEW to 313131. Or you can also, again, click that button that says, I accepted Jesus Christ or I prayed with the pastor. And let us know so we can get that resource to you right away. 
Well, thank you again for being a part of this weekend's message, this time together, our online service. So grateful for you. We're praying for you, asking God's strength and blessings to be upon you. And before we go today, I want to proclaim a benediction, a blessing over your life as you move into this week. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. Would you know this week that God is for you he is not against you. He is fighting battles for you. You can trust in Him. Let Him restore your soul. Hi, Pastor Dale here again. So grateful that you've joined us this weekend for our time together. Let me mention just a couple of things. Please remember that we're praying for you. I know it's a tough time financially for many of you. Some of you are facing just the potential of layoffs and those kinds of things. We want you to know that we are standing behind you and praying for you. And then also want you to be aware of the fact that if you can continue to give during this time, it certainly is a blessing to us. If you want to learn more about giving here during this time uh, while we're on online services, you can go to our website at church-redeemer.org slash give slash ways and all that information is there for you, how you can be a part. We love you again. We're, we're supporting you in this time. We want you to know that, that we care deeply about you and thank you for your support as well. Hey guys, so glad to see you with us for our online worship experience. You know, one of the best things that you can be doing during this season is to stay connected to your church. And we want you to know that Church of the Redeemer is here to support you and encourage you and pray for you during this time. If you're new here to Church of the Redeemer, we're so glad that you're here with us. We'd love to get to know you and we'd wanna help you get connected to church life. So your chat host is gonna be posting a link to a guest card that you can fill out. Take a second and fill that card out right where you're at. That's a great way for us to get to know you and help get you connected to church life. I'm just gonna take a few moments and talk about some of the great ways that you can stay connected to us at Church of the Redeemer during this season. First off, if you have kids, we hope that they were blessed by that online worship experience that's available on demand last week and we have a brand new experience for them this week. All you need to do to access that is head to our website, church-redeemer.org slash kids. That brand new worship experience is gonna be available for them on demand all throughout the week, so make sure you encourage them to check that out. If you're an adult here joining us today, we'd love for you to stay connected to your friends as well. And the way that we wanna encourage you to do that is by joining a group. All you need to do is head over to our website, church-redeemer.org slash groups, and you'll be able to find all the online groups there that you can join. Also, if you're interested in starting a group, there's no better time to do that than right now. You can start a group from right where you're at online. Again, head to our website, church-redeemer.org slash groups, and you'll find all the instructions for how you can start a group online. One of the ways that we wanna be serving and impacting our community is through what we're calling Bags of Love. You heard us talk about that last week. One of the ways that we're able to resource our nurses and our doctors in our area is by providing them with some practical supplies that they need to be able to serve our community effectively. And what we wanna do is we wanna encourage you to be able to donate supplies that we're gonna be putting together and distributing to our nurses and doctors. To be able to donate those supplies, all you need to do is head over to our website, church-redeemer.org slash bags of love. And once you're there, you'll find our online Amazon registry that you can use to donate items that we'll put together and we'll give to our nurses and doctors in our area. I know it'll be a huge blessing to them and I want to encourage you, if you're able, be a part of that serving effort. Can you believe that Easter is right around the corner? We're just a couple days away from our Easter weekend and we want to invite you to do two things. Number one, head over to our website to find all of our service times and ways that you can stay connected during our Easter weekend. Invite everyone that you know to join us for our Easter weekend. We believe that this is an amazing opportunity that God is going to used to impact thousands of people with the gospel message this Easter season, and you can be a part of that. So head to our website and invite people to join us as well. Lastly, we'd love to stay connected with you throughout the week. If you have any prayer requests that you'd like to send to us throughout the week, head over to church-redeemer.org prayer, and we'd love to be praying with you about all the requests that you submit. 